Um, I firmly believe my time has already been determined by the creator. So what I'm living now is what he has given me as a gift. And what I do with this is a gift back to him. Good morning, Miss Brenda. How are you? Good morning, Miss Leslie. Such a pleasure to see you this morning. And thanks for having me. It is indeed my pleasure. I want to thank you for joining us, joining us um, on Astro at Home, Astro Women at Home, and want to thank you for inviting us into your beautiful home. You're more than welcome, and thank you again so so very very much. Looking forward to this. This is this is exciting. Thank you. Well, it is my pleasure. I tell you, when I was sent the interview in information, I was pleasantly surprised to see the name Brenda O'Neill. And I thought, surely this could not be my friend, Brenda O'Neill. And I took a look at the questionnaire and saw the email and I thought, that's my sorority sister. That's my friend. That's my mentor. That's my counselor. It is a pleasure having you. It's such a blessing. Sisterhood forever. Proud member of Alpha Cap Alpha Sorority Incorporated. That's right. That's right. And I tell you, we've got a lot of good questions for you today. But before we get started, um, I just want to share that it is a pleasure talking to you. Um, we've, um, we've got so many wonderful connections. We are sorority sisters. Yes. We are friends. Yes. We co-founded a wonderful group called the International, International Media Ladies. Yes. And yes. so we traveled the world together. South Africa, this time two years ago. That's right. This time two years ago, we were celebrating the 100th birthday of Nelson Mandela. Yes. And we went from Cape Town to Johannesburg, and what were the other two? We went to Durban and Port Elizabeth. That's right, Durban and Port Elizabeth as well. And it was really a pleasure traveling with you, and I look forward to the times that we can travel together again. So excited to travel and see the rest of the world with you. Yes, ma'am. Such a giving heart, Leslie, such a giving heart. You inspire me. It makes me do better, so I thank you for that. Well, I thank you for your kind words, Miss Brenda, and I feel the very true same. words, true words, not kind, true words. Well, I thank you so much, and I feel the very same way about you. Thank you. Yes. Now, um, how are your wonderful sons and your daughter in loves and those grandbabies doing? Well, I'm here in Maryland with my youngest and his wife and my grandson, who is nine years old. We are doing well. Um, I have adopted a plant-based lifestyle since that is their lifestyle, which has been good for me, down 14 pounds and counting. Uh, we're gardening, the ones in Charlotte. Um, I miss the little girl, but we have FaceTime, which is a wonderful blessing. So I speak to her and uh, then once or twice a day. Uh, it's a blessing that everyone is still employed and able to work from home. So we're blessed. We're, we're, doing, we're doing well. We're doing well. That is indeed a blessing, and you look absolutely marvelous, and thank you for that idea. That is something that I can consider um, eating uh, fruits and vegetables over the next several weeks. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't as difficult as I thought because I was a bacon lover, but it really wasn't that difficult. Uh, once, and there's a video that's out called What the Health, and once I watch that, I'm good without meat. I really am. So I encourage everyone to take a look at that and determine for yourself what might work. It's called What the Health. Well, thank you so much. I will certainly take a look at that. And while reviewing your wonderful um, questionnaire, I am so impressed. You are such an, an accomplished woman, and I admire you so. And one of the things that you wrote on the questionnaire is that it is important to be a strong Black woman. So why is it important to you to be a strong black woman? As a matriarch now of my family, and, and once I was the baby, but as the matriarch, it's important to leave a footprint. Um, it's important for others to see that through history, we have been strong black women because we have had to be. Um, it's important to be true to yourself. Uh, it's important to know that there is something inside 
that will carry you through all of this. And, and, and that's why it's important to be strong and confident and that's what makes us Asherah women, is the strength and the confidence. And it's also important to be true to yourself. And that's an Asherah woman as well. Own yourself. Be yourself. So, so that's what it means to me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And one of the other things that I saw that encouraged me and inspired me so is that you said that it is important for us to be patient and to be thankful, and this too shall pass. And I think that's so important in light of where we are right now. So what, why do you think those things are important? We have to have hope, and the hope is that this will pass. Um, I've learned patience because, as you know, I'm normally on a plane several times a month. So I have learned, uh, as a matter of fact, I laid in the middle of the floor the other day and just said, I think I'm okay now. I think I'm okay now. So you've learned to just sit outside and appreciate the beauty that God has provided for us. So I've learned to uh, move a little bit more, a little bit slower in my life. Uh, it was a pretty good pace there for a while, Leslie, and you know that because you were moving at that same pace. So we've had to adjust. So some of the things I've started doing, I started crafting. Uh, my daughter-in-law has a wonderful friend. Um, I've always been a knitter and a crocheter, and um, I'm not crocheting anymore because I literally crocheted a blanket that's big enough for me, you, and all of our sorority sisters to be in. So I will not crochet again, but I'm making coasters to put drinks on. So I'm a middle, uh, member of Female Leaders in Travel. So we have a conference in July, so I made these. And I am a two-time breast cancer survivor, and I support the Essence of Hope Breast Cancer Foundation in St. Kitts. So since all of our fundraisers were canceled, I created these for our members to encourage them. And it says, love, strength, faith, and hope. And I have also taken up journaling. And I am not a writer, even though I was an English major, I don't like to write, but I've taken time to write. And I got this beautiful journal from Joanne Fabrics for $3. It says, happiness looks gorgeous on you. So I take time to kind of write how I anticipate this to look once we come out from a business standpoint as well as a personal standpoint. So that has helped as well. And as I mentioned before, my daughter-in-law has taken up gardening. Um, they built a beautiful greenhouse in the back. I go to Leviticus Greenhouse once a month. Uh, the gentleman shares his knowledge and his plants with me. I came home last week with spinach, kale, mustard, uh, strawberries. So learning how that piece starts to look as well. So learning to take better care of ourselves. I bought a slim cycle, yay. So I ride in the morning. And um, that gets the knees functioning again. So I'll be able to do some of those wonderful excursions when we do come out of this. Well, you are doing such exciting things and I'm loving those beautiful coasters. And so I would love to get one if you could send a message to me and let me know how I would order it. I, I it is yours, butterfly. It is yours, you shall have it. Just make sure I have your address, but you should have it, it's yours. Thank you so much. I will send that along to you. And You're going to Soar War Leslie, okay? Yes, I love it. Thank you. You're and that greenhouse, tell me a little more a little more about that. That is very interesting. Well, I would love to show it to you, but I think moving is something I'm not supposed to do. So I will tell you about it. It is actually a greenhouse with a cover and vents on the sides. Um, they had the... Uh, potting soil delivered, the planting soil delivered, and there's cabbage and there's cucumbers and there's strawberries and there's squash and there's peppers and there's cantaloupe. We even have a peach tree. I forgot to tell you that. The last time I went to visit him, he gave me a peach tree. He gives his seniors, which I'm proud to be now, he gives his seniors plants because he wants us to become healthy. He wants us to become more self-sufficient. Uh, she has string beans. So all of that is growing in the beautiful greenhouse out in the back. And we've shared with neighbors. So the neighbor across the street is now growing tomatoes and cucumbers. So just, and uh, we were in the back the other day and one of the neighbors, she's trying to start. So everybody's outside in a little bit of soil trying to grow something um, because we understand it's important to us health-wise, money-wise. Um, and, and that's what we're doing, that's what we're doing. Well, I love it. Thank you for sharing that with me. And I know that you are a member of the Astro Face, the Facebook um, Astro Women, uh, Astro Faith and Fashion. Yes, I've got yes, it. I am. Faith and Fashion. 
We would love to see a short video clip of the beautiful greenhouse. If your daughter in love would like for you to share it with us, if you could shoot about a 60 second clip in the greenhouse and tell us about it and post it to our Facebook page, we'd love to see it. I will do it certainly as soon as I finish, no problem. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Now, Miss Brenda, you faced an and adversity or two in your life. Yes. And you overcome the challenge of breast cancer. Yes. Can you share that experience with us? Um, favorite scripture is 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. And that says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. And that is the motto. I firmly believe, I, I know cancer is a physical illness, but I also know that it is a mental challenge as well. So that is the verse that I hold on to, that we don't really have a spirit of fear. Um, I firmly believe my time has already been determined by the creator. So what I'm living now is what he has given me as a gift. And what I do with this is a gift back to him. So I think it's important just to understand that uh, you can heal thyself by changing your lifestyle, changing the way you eat, changing your activities. So I, I think that we have to realize that he's given us a gift and we must use that gift back to him. So that is how I battle. Um, and uh, I believe uh, Dr. Jasmine Scalark loves to play this song. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah, so that's how I fight my battles. Well, you live life to the fullest every day. And yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That is certainly an inspiration to me and so many others. Um, now, Miss Brenda, you are with your son. You're um, with your son and one of your son in loves, and and uh, your son and your one of your daughter in loves, and your grandbaby. Yes. Um, how are you um, facing the coronavirus? How has your life changed? Well, I'm not on an airplane. I'm not hugging people. Um, but I am focused on me and making me a better me. And I think someone posted on Facebook the other day, the things we take for granted, the conversations, the hugs, the handshakes. Um, so what I've tried to do is be obedient to the spirit. And when someone comes to mind, give them a call, send them a quick message. Are you okay? Um, how's it going? What's the struggle today? Let's just be thankful. So I have a lot of friends who've been loving and caring and sending me messages first thing in the morning. Good morning, rise and shine. Um, so that's important. That's important. The young man is doing online schooling, uh, which he does in the morning and is upstairs doing it this time. Uh, mommy's in her vision room. She has a conference this weekend, so she's preparing for that. Um, Daddy works with the educational system, so they're working on how the rest of the year will look for that. So everyone uh, is doing what they do. We try to come together in the evenings and play a video game or chat and, and come together as a family, but everybody's still functioning. Uh, the ones in Charlotte, same thing. We try to, to, to touch base and make sure all is well. I mean, Mother's Day, my daughter in love here made me a beautiful um, uh, robe. Uh, the little girl in Charlotte made me an adorable book and a makeup bag that said, Quarantine Mom 2020. So the handwritten things, the small things make such a big difference. It's not necessarily about a gift board from Amazon, but something someone took time to care about and to put effort into for you. So uh, that's what we're doing here. Uh, this family has always been one that's appreciated this pace. So they've kind of helped me adjust to this pace because it surely is not my pace, but I've adjusted. I've adjusted. Oh, good, good. And that sounds like you're having a wonderful time with your family, and that is certainly a blessing. Mm -hmm. I am, I am. I miss that little girl in Charlotte, though, man. She's growing so fast. I, I, I video chat with her, and I'm like, where is the time going? You know, when did you get so tall? So I can't wait to give her a big, big, big hug as well. Oh, yes. When do you think you'll be able to see Charlotte? I'm not going to put a date on that. Um, I'm really going to have to get to my comfortable place. Um, I'm not there yet. I don't necessarily care to sit on a plane with 150 people uh, just yet. We here in Maryland are coming out of our stay at home on Friday at five o'clock. It's becoming a safer at home option. So I'm going to give it a little bit more time um, and see what it looks like. No rush. None at all. I mean, I want to see her. So I'm thankful for the Facebook Live that I can see her. 
but uh, don't want to take anything or take a risk to my health, their health, or the family here. So we'll just take our time. Good. That's right. And so your um, your your guidelines will be relaxed um, a little in phase uh, phase one. He said yesterday, phase one on this Friday at five p.m. I believe that uh, stores can open at fifty percent capacity. Uh, the beauty shops can open, the barber shops can open by appointment only. Um, so I guess they're going to try. Um, I, I've often questioned what the coming out will look like where we all of a sudden just wake up one day and say we're good and just bolt out. Um, I have a friend who is a primary doctor of infectious diseases in Antigua. She doesn't necessarily think we handled this quite properly um, because now you've locked people down with no immunity and you're letting them loose. So it might have been better. Yes, people would have died, but it might have been better to just kind of ride this thing because I believe it's been around for a while. I don't think it just popped up in February or March. So uh, we'll see what it looks like because how do you ride a metro six foot apart? You know, how do you ride a bus six foot apart? What do you do? Uh, the other day, the airline said they were going to leave middle seats empty, but people had videos of planes packed full. And I think I read an article this morning that says that employees are not going to be requiring them to wear masks, they're going to suggest. So uh, it will be a question of personal comfort. And I, I suppose I don't know when that is. Hopefully not too long from now, but yeah. You'll know when the time is right for you to- oh, yes. But for now, how do you stay connected to your church family? Well, I'm a proud member of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. We're Pastor John Jenkins and Lady Trina Jacks. Uh, Trina, uh, take good care of us. Uh, I'm a member of Grace Girls, which is our women's ministry. And Pastor Trina comes on every day at noon and guides us through devotions. Uh, we stay connected. I'm a member of Grace Girls Usher Board. We check on each other. Good morning. How are you? How's it going? Do you need anything? Uh, we have Bible studies on Tuesday nights, services on Sunday. Um, Pastor does also bring in speakers from time to time to discuss the coronavirus. Uh, he has made the statement that we will not come together until we can all come together. Um, so I don't know how long that looks like, but uh, we continue to stay connected through those, uh, through those different ministries, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you are such a friendly person and a loving person. So you got your sorority sisters. Yes your colleagues, you've got your friends who are members of various groups, you've got your extended family. How do you stay um, connected to those people? I'm starting to tire of Zoom right now, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, and I'm a businesswoman as well. I own my own travel agency. Uh, so we have webinars. Uh, we, we check on each other. Are you okay? How, you know, some people have been laid off in that industry. How are you holding up? Uh, what do you see the future to be? So it's Zoom meetings, it's telephone calls, it's text messages, it's Facebook Messenger. It's just doing the best you can. And sometimes it's not saying anything. Sometimes it's just going in that closet and just me and him. You know what I mean? So uh, that, that's, that's basically how you handle it. Because like I said, I think everybody right now is so Zoomed out that when we come back to real world, they may never want to see Zoom again. Um, but, but you do what you need to do business wise. You do what you need to do to stay comfortable. Um, and it's important to check on each other because it's very, very difficult for some folks right now and everyone doesn't handle it the same way. And everybody doesn't have necessarily the coping mechanisms that we do. So it's important that they see how you're coping, see how you're dealing and uh, maybe they can glean something from that. Again, everybody has to do it individually, but there's always, uh, uh, a playbook out there on maybe you could try this, maybe you could try that and go from there. Wonderful. Well, can you, you just mentioned the name, you just mentioned that you are an entrepreneur. Can yes. You share the name of your business and tell mm -hmm. a little about it. Sure, my pleasure. It is with this ring, Destination Weddings and Honeymoons. And as it sounds, I do uh, Destination Weddings. Uh, we specialize in Indian and Nigerian weddings. I've uh, been at this for about 28 years now. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. I did a webinar yesterday where someone asked, would destination weddings ever be the same? They won't be the same. They will be. They will be different um, because anytime you have large groups of people, you have to see how that will be handled. 
Uh, so I've advised people to use caution, even though destinations are opening on June 1st, give them a chance to figure out how this is supposed to look. Uh, because as you know, as the mother of a bride, it's a very emotional time. Um, and, Ta and Tasha was planning a beautiful wedding and before COVID came. So it's a very emotional time and you want, don't want to add to their emotions. So I think it's important that we get some correct answers and some guidance on how that's going to look. So for right now, I post pretty pictures and remind you that this too will pass, but there's no hard selling taking place right now. People need time to cope with this before they think about doing something different. Do I have weddings for 2021? Yes, I do. Are we talking about it right now? No, you can maybe go in and discuss your colors or what you might want flowers to look like or what you might, but there's really no need for a conversation at this point. We've got to wait and see what airlines will even do um, schedule-wise. So it, it is the patient season. It is the restart. Um, so, so that's what we're doing right now. Well, I think you are handling this so well, and um, it just shows what a caring person you are. You're just more interested in their health and their well-being than your bottom line. It has to be that way, Leslie. It has to be that way. Uh, there were a couple of suppliers in the beginning that were putting out specials. You can't come to someone who hasn't had a paycheck in seven months and say, would you like to go to Aruba? Mm, no. No. Um, I had a couple that came back in February from Anguilla. They've called. They've sent a gift card. We just want to make sure you're well. We want to thank you for giving us that memory. So uh, you have to be human. Um, we've talked with some of our suppliers and airline partners and remind them, you have to be human. We understand the bottom line, you need money, but in this season, it's got to be a different look, at least for right now, and then go back and rework it. But for right now, um, too many people without any source of funding, and uh, that, that's difficult, again, for everyone involved, because we don't get paid until someone travels. So, um, yeah, but you have to be human. It's important. Yes, indeed, and um, you mentioned in Tasha's wedding, I tell you, we were so very saddened that we had to postpone the big wedding, but we'll have it in the future. And as you shared, we'll do that when the time is right and when it's safe to do it. Yeah, I have very disappointed brides for May and June. Very, very excited and held on until the very end. And then you had to have that reality talk that says, and then they say, okay, well, we'll do it next year. No problem. Maybe we'll just go to the courthouse and get married. And next year, we'll do like a vow renewal and bring our friends. So, uh, yeah, everybody has to have that gut check. And you have to understand when to have that conversation um, as well and how to have that conversation. Uh, as much as you would like to go, it's not safe for you and your guests. So we think perhaps you should look at rescheduling uh, the day so you can celebrate instead of worry about. Because if you go now, you tend to worry what will take place. Uh, so give yourself some time to really reset and really embrace uh, sharing time with family and friends. But Aunt Tasha handled it well. Yes, she did. She handled it well. Her and Jules. Wish them all the best. Thank you so much. That is really mm -hmm. great for you. Mm -hmm. Brenda, you care for so many people. Um, just in your last response, um, the fact that you show so much concern for your clients, you're that way about your family and friends. You, um, until this pandemic, you've always been on the go, on the go. Now, even inside, you're connecting with everybody um, on Facebook. You're connecting with everybody on Zoom. How do you find time just for yourself? How do you find that me time? Well, that's part of the patience factor. As you know, I used to be that early riser, that 5 or 6 a.m. riser. I don't do that anymore. No, ma'am, I don't do that anymore. Um, I allow myself time for devotion in the morning to ride my bike. There are certain TV shows that I must see that are absolute nonsense. 90 Day Fiance has me hooked beyond words. Uh, so, and sitting outside, just, you know, we have a beautiful patio in the back, just sitting out back and listening to the birds sing. Things you used to not even really hear because of the noise. Uh, we're near Andrews Air Force Base, so every once in a while, one of those big planes fly over. I did hear the Thunderbirds go by. I didn't see them, but heard them. So you, it's part of that patience thing again, where you have to take it now. Let's, not, let's keep this straight and real. The first couple of weeks, I boomed off the wall, tried to sneak out the house, all of that. I'm on that. But I have found a place within me that says I'm good because I'm a people person. So my neighbor and I have found ways to have dis social distancing connections. 
we'll meet each other in the driveway. I have some potatoes. You want some potatoes? I have a hot dog on hot dog. Um, you know, so we've learned to communicate that way. Her daughter makes uh, sea moss, which is excellent for your body. So she brings the sea moss over. She, uh, the other day I said I wanted soursop tea so bad. She dropped some leaves in the back of the mailbox and said, your soursop's in the back of the mailbox. So those types of random things are taking place and they mean so very, very much. My business partner in New York, her husband has taken up baking. So she's like, keep an eye out for the post office. I have a, I have a, a package coming for you. And he's making bread. And that's the next thing, Leslie. People are coming with, with such creative ways. I learned how to take my nails off with a video. Hello. Um, so many things you're learning to do. People are coming on with their gifts. How do I plant? Um, how do you make a mask? How do you do? So, so many people are using their gifts now. And that's inspiring to me as well to see that. That anything right now you need to know about or know how to make, somebody's out there that knows how to do it. I, uh, one, of my, one of our sorority sisters in Charlotte had said, because I have this curly hair here, had said that uh, steaming was good for your hair. So look at the steamers, very expensive and out of stock. Went on YouTube, put a wet towel in the microwave for two minutes, spray a plastic bag, put it on your head, sit under the dryer for 30 minutes, bam, moist hair. So we're learning to do things differently. Uh, the world will never be the same, but it might be better if we really put our energies into it and look at it as, okay, we need it to stop, pause, reset, and let's try this again. Well, thank you so much for those wonderful words of advice. And your hair looks absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Shanika. She took my sides yeah. down. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, thank you, Shanika. She took my sides down yesterday. Yes, well, bless her heart. It's beautiful. Thank it's beautiful. you. Thank now, Miss Brenda, what do you miss about your everyday life? I miss my friends, the hugs. Um, I miss getting on an airplane, going to fabulous places. I miss my friends in fabulous places. I miss my church. Um, I miss the human interaction. I certainly have it here because if I were not here, I would be home in Pittsburgh by myself, uh, which would not be a good option. So I'm not at all complaining. But to answer the question, those are some of the things that I miss. I miss being able to go see the cherry blossoms this year. Um, I love riding the Metro. I found out that there are shows at the Kennedy Center every night for free, all different genres. And I was looking forward and had kind of found a pace. The last thing I went to see was Beyonce the Mask. So I was looking forward to those things. So to me, it's little things, walking through the farmer's market. It's not anything really, really major, but the little things um, that I miss. Oh, yes. Um, all of those are exciting, the little things and the big things. Yeah. It's a little about the big things. You are a world traveler. So where are some of your favorite locations, exotic countries? Well, I'm a lover of St. Kitts and Nevis. I think it's the hidden gem of the Caribbean. Um, I also love Grenada. Certainly, I love Mexico and Jamaica. Um, I did have an opportunity to go to Paris, uh, which I found fascinating. I'm not a real York girl, but those are some places I still would like to see at some point in time. Um, but just wanted my Caribbean family to be safe um, because they really can't afford to open up and have us come and bring this to them when they're battling to recover from it themselves. So I, I, I miss my juice man delivering. Um, I miss nurses, good Sunday dinners in St. Kitts. I miss Sherry hauling across the street, come get your chicken, come get your fries, come get your ribs. So again, Leslie, it's really little things that I'm missing because I have all the big things that I need, but it's those things that you miss. Being able to say, you know what, I think I'm gonna go to Cancun for a couple of days and to just have people love on you when you get there, you know? Let's go see this, let's go do that. So those are the types of things um, that, that are missing at this point in time and, and hoping that they are okay too because it's a totally different struggle. You and I go to the grocery store, they have to wait for a container to come. Uh, by ship. But the fortunate thing is, is they're now starting to appreciate agriculture as well and how much they actually can grow and become self-sufficient. So again, yes, this is a horrible thing, but it's bringing about good things as well. Good. Now, were you born in St. Kitts or where were you born? No, uh, I have a Caribbean background of St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. 
And let me tell you this, they did the most amazing job in marketing I've ever seen in my life. Normally in April, it is carnival time in uh, St. Thomas. And instead of whining and complaining that carnival didn't take place, they actually published a carnival calendar and did everything just as if carnival were taking place. They had the band set up in the carnival village, of course, no audiences. They had the DJs. They did juve. I was up in my room at 4.30 in the morning dancing nonstop for six hours. He literally was like, the big truck is coming around the corner. If you've lost your children, they're over by booth here. If you need goat water, it's at booth number seven. They literally did it as if the actual carnival was still running. And what that did was say, okay, so St. Quick Carnival's in December. Maybe, but if not, I'm in St. Thomas next year for Carnival. Literally, Leslie, between five and 7,000 people watch those events. They rebroadcast the Carnival from last year, the Adult Parade and the Children's Parade. It was brilliant marketing, brilliant. I was so proud. I was like, instead of whining and complaining, you turned that into an opportunity for people to say, you know what? I think I really want to see that. I think I really want to do that. So it was brilliant. It was brilliant. So I was very proud of, uh, of that moment. Yes. That is a great idea. And St. Croix is beautiful. I think that's where we originally met, isn't it? It was. It was. It was. And we had a wonderful time. So, Ramita, it was a wonderful experience. Yes, indeed. Hope we'll be able to, you know, we should do Carnival next year at St. Thomas. We should work on that. I agree, Les. We should work on that. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. I do you miss dressing up? What I have decided to do is I dress up at least two times a week and I put on makeup because I found myself becoming too acclimated to stretch pants and t-shirts and I didn't want to stay in that place. I have an amazing makeup, makeup artist friend. He does all my brides uh, styling trio and we did a makeup class the other day. I haven't mastered it yet, but we just had a lot of fun. We laughed. He was like, just get everything together that you have and let's practice, practice, practice. So he and I have been doing that. Um, so yeah, I tried it because it's important for your mindset to not stay in, I didn't know Leslie, I had so many stretch pants. <laughs> so, so we have to put those, I have on my astral outfit today. Wait, standing up, colorful. Hold on, I'm moving, sorry. It's, yeah. right. it's beautiful, yes, yes, you look absolutely so I put on my ash row today and I, we had um, an African Sunday at church and I wore my black and white ash row because actually we did a lot of ash row shopping before we went to South Africa. Um, and and, and uh, that, was, that was a nice experience because we were able to express the culture but still look so refined and everything. It was cool. I really, man, that trip was good, Leslie, huh? That was, that was the best trip of my life. It was. was and we've both taken a lot of trips. And yeah wearing my Astro um, Afrocentric clothes. You were wearing your Astro African inspired clothes, uh, yeah. African inspired clothes. It was amazing. It really was. It really, really was. Something for every kid. And they packed so well. That was what was really nice too. They packed really, really well. Really, it really sure packed. did. Yeah. They sure did. Yeah. And now is there, um, once the guidelines are, um, once we're released, right. um, once the rules are relaxed, yeah. Where would you? What event would you like to go to in the future? What event would I like to go to? Yes, I'm holding out hope for uh, Christmas festival in Saint Croix. I really am. I really am holding out hope that that will happen. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm a member of a group. Uh, female. Oh, I always get it wrong. Let me get it right. Female leaders in travel female leaders in travel. There are 40 of us. We're due together in uh, Cabo, July 15th at LeBlanc to have our conclave and meeting and discuss how we as women and leaders in travel can move forward. I'm hoping that will take place. Not certain, but hoping. But I think personally for me, it would be a Christmas festival in St. Croix that would uh, would would hopefully happen. And that is towards the end of December after Christmas. Well, it runs all of December, but the part I would attend would be right after Christmas. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Now, um, has your hair care routine changed? Have you tried maybe hair wraps? Have you tried wigs? 
or are you going natural with your beautiful natural hair? I've been natural for quite some time now. Um, I've let it grow a bit longer. It's a bit tight now because I just curled it in, but I find I can easily just stand in the shower and start twisting. And then it comes out as something. And I learned that little steamer trick. So for me, being natural has been easy. I stand in the shower, I gel, I twist, and I'm done. So for me, it's been easy. Um, thought I wanted to be a great person. Um, my neighbor offered to let me try on a wig and see how that looked. I was not impressed. So we shall not be going gray anytime soon. No. Mm -mm. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm easy. It's, it's short. It's, it curls itself, really. And, um, you know, that's, that's what I do. So no biggie there. Just moisturize, twist, keep it going. Well, you and I are way too young to go gray. <laughs> but my mama was so pretty with that gray. Oh, she was so pretty, but it didn't work for me. So no, we won't be doing that anytime soon. Well, you know what I shared with my um, husband and children? When it gets to be salt and pepper, when it gets- That's what I want, Leslie, salt and pepper. And it won't salt do and that. Pepper. I want salt and pepper. When, yep. when it gets to be half and half, I will go, but with it being a dot of gray here, a dot of gray there, I'm not going for that. But like your mother, when it's beautifully gray, I'm going to be on board. I will. I will. I agree. Yes, indeed. Now, um, we mentioned hope early, earlier. You talked mm -hmm. about little. But um, can you share with us, what gives you hope? It's the God in me. Um, without him, we have no hope. Um, I see the flowers bloom. I see the birds sing. Um, I wake up in the morning and I see the sun and the moon still in the sky. So that is my hope. Uh, that is my belief. Uh, that's what keeps me going. Um, again, everyone has to find their own way, but I can truly say, Leslie, he's been good to me and continues to be good to me. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let me ask you. What does it mean to be an Astro woman? An Astro woman is strong. She is confident. Um, she has integrity in everything that she does uh, and in the way she handles. And she handles from a faith-based option as well, uh, knowing from whence our strength cometh and it comes from the Lord. So that's what it means to me, uh, being not necessarily the cookie cutter, but enjoying the uniqueness that makes Astro the company that it is and so proud to be a part of. And so thanks for the sharing moment today. Brilliant idea to just talk and share. Uh, it's important for others to see that the struggle is real, but the hope is real too. Well, it is our pleasure to chat with you. And let me ask you this, how does an Astro woman challenge and adversity? With positivity. Uh, am I positive all the time? Certainly not. But it's so much easier when you can see the brighter side of something uh, and know that all things are working for our good. And that's the promise and that is the hope, is that this is all working out for our good. We don't see it necessarily right now, but I do see the small things in me that have gotten better. Again, the patience, the appreciation, um, just being thankful and grateful. I love when I see people use those words online, that they're just thankful and grateful because it could be a lot worse. Um, we've had friends who've been hospitalized. We've had friends who've lost family members. So uh, you handle it with your faith. Um, like I say, knowing that all things are working for our good and uh, seeking clarity when you don't necessarily see it uh, and just trusting sometimes blindly that it is happening. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. My friend, I have enjoyed our time together this morning. You have inspired us all, just as you inspire me all the time. Um, before we do you have any words of encouragement, um, any pearls of wisdom you'd like to share with the ladies Astro and their family and friends? I just need you all to remember, a friend of mine in St. Kitts wrote a beautiful song, and the song says, this too shall pass. Uh, so I want to encourage everyone to understand this is going to pass. It is going to be different, but it is going to pass. And on the other side of this will be brighter. 
So just, you know, really take good care of yourselves in this time because I lost the weight without even trying just by changing the lifestyle. Uh, and my son and daughter-in-law encouraged that. So really, really start being good to you. Uh, you deserve it. You really, really deserve it. Uh, and it's important to help you handle what's coming when you've been good to yourself. Uh, certainly, let others be kind to you. Sometimes I struggle with that. I always want to be the giver. But I had a friend tell me one time, don't block my blessing. Let me do for you what I want to do. So be receptive of those who are giving unto you as well. Um, and just, just know, like I said, it's going to be over. It really is. I hope not too soon. I hope we will exhibit patience and wisdom as we come out of this. Uh, because Leslie, I don't want to do it again, okay? I'm good, but I don't want to do it again. Nope, I don't want to do it again. Because we're on week number 11. Yeah, I'll stay at home. So, um, you know, will I, am I going to run and jump out on Friday? No, no. Um, I don't think it's time yet. Uh, how will I know? Mm, hope I will. Uh, but uh, yeah, just know that it's going to pass. It's not going to always, what's the song say? It won't always be like this. Yeah, yeah, it won't always be like this. Well, Miss Brenda, those are wonderful words for us to live by. It has been a pleasure sitting and chatting with you. I've enjoyed seeing your beautiful face. So, Leslie, I love you so much. It's so good yes. to see you. And I, I look can't forward wait to, to give you that uh, hug. That's right. I look forward to the time that we can give each other that big hug. It's a virtual hug. Right now, we'll send hug. each other love. Yes. And, and I want to tell you that we thank you so very much for all that you do to inspire others. And I'm so excited that you will be inspiring all of our friends um, who are Astro women, as well as their family and their friends. Thank, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really, really appreciate it. And I really can't wait to see you and hug you soon, okay? Love to the family, yeah? Well, it's our pleasure. Love to your family, and I will talk to you later. Talk soon. Thank you so much. Remember, Bye -bye. this is going to pass. Bye. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.